The aim was to create three service design ideas aimed at transforming corporate parenting in Falkirk to put love and relationships at the heart of young people's experiences leaving care. What this project has achieved is nothing less than groundbreaking. For me, one of the keys was it was just people from everywhere. Total mix of young people, total mix of staff or the council. I would advise everybody to take part because it's, it's just been life affirming and I, I just want everybody to see the value in this project. You just felt understood and listened to. It was like a hug. The most dynamic bit was when the, the young people came into the project. You know, they were such a massive part of what we did. We couldn't have done it in the same way without them. If it was your own child, you would support them through all these journeys and you would fight for them to get what they were, they were due. Just treat us like how you would treat your own child. Like, it's as simple as that. It's, it's the best thing I've ever done. Work related. <laughs> best thing ever. The idea for the project came around at a really good time for us in Falkirk. We were talking about the need to transform the way that we did our work, the way that we delivered services, but people really hadn't got to grips with how do you actually do that? What does that look like in practice? So this service design project was designed to be community-led and there was two different community perspectives involved. There was the care leavers who informed the funder, the Life Changes Trust, what they wanted the vision for this work to be. And they decided it was about love and relationships being at the heart of leaving care services. Then the other community was the staff in Falkirk Council and care leavers from Falkirk Council. And they decided on the type of questions they wanted to ask, how they made sense of the information they gathered, what that led to, what their priorities would be, and how those priorities manifested into policies and service designs. So it's those communities together that actually drove the whole uh, project forward. So there was two concepts which affected the design of this work. One was service design and one was systems leadership. Generally, the operational needs of an organisation can sometimes overshadow the needs of people that are using the service. And so what service design seeks to do is bring the voice of the people that use the service to the fore and also fold that into the process of um, designing and developing a service. But that led us into systems leadership. You could say the systems in this project were Falkirk Council and the local community. And there's actually systems within those systems. So there's a range of council departments and services and a range of communities that work to support care leavers as well as care leavers themselves. None of those systems are the same, but there will be elements in all of those systems that are interested in similar things. And those elements were the people that we wanted to take part in this project and be our systems leaders. <laughs> So this is an example of the process that we worked through. There was five stages. So we had set up discovering your community's experiences, bringing those discoveries together, co-designing services, and then sharing what was created. Um, we started off in two separate groups with care leavers, and they were understanding their experiences together, and corporate parents who were also learning about being a corporate parent and thinking about what that meant to them. And they did their own research separately and then brought those together to share those experiences with one another. Um, and as a consequence of doing this, they were able to understand what they thought as a community now together, love and relationships looked like, felt like, sounded like, and what you might think when you are connected with somebody. And then as a group together, brought all of their work together to identify from these two perspectives what service designs they needed to create. Um, they identified three different types of services and worked through the service design double diamond um, before they um, presented their results to the council. And all of this was housed in a systems leadership point of view, which was really focused on engagement and connection between everyone involved. So another area of focus for this service design project was that it was about cultural change. So care leavers told us that the cultural changes they wanted to see was love and relationships being at the heart of leaving care provision. 
and, and that makes complete sense. We all want to be looked after as we move on from home and we live and grow in the world. We want those relationships to continue. In fact, we expect that and why should it be any different for care leavers? So it, it completely makes sense, that cultural shift. But practically, where we're sitting now, culturally, there's a lot of barriers around that. What does love look like in the workplace? Are we comfortable even talking about love in the workplace? What might people think if we were loving someone in the workplace? And what might that mean to us and our professional identity? So there was lots of different barriers that we needed to address, be they individually, within group settings, or within the system in Falkirk Council. And so the project was really designed in ways that offer people spaces to explore those barriers, make sense of them from their point of view, perhaps experience them as part of the project, and address them in the service designs that they created. The design of the whole work was around people developing relationships together, experiencing that together, so they could take that learning into what they were suggesting in their service designs. So in a, in a small way, they were starting to experience what their services might actually feel like together. One of the ways that we recruited people to take part in the project was to ask what their love languages were. And love languages offer people um, different ways of thinking, saying, doing or feeling loved. So, for example, people may think the best of care leavers and help them to improve. People might say, um, what's your opinion when they're asking or, or telling them something? Um, or they might celebrate them and congratulate them at particular times in their lives. And those were all different examples of how care leavers would feel loved. However, there's many, many more, and actually what they created was a range of different ways that corporate parents and care leavers can engage with one another and show love that best suits them. And we offered this as a tool to the participants in the project, and they used it to explain what love and relationships look like to them. So, relationships were described as being a two-way street, and things people thought should be two-way included, making time to have relationships, asking people what their opinions are, feeling and being treated like an equal, and relationships staying the same so that you can contact people whenever you actually want to rather than it happening within a nine to five. To set up the project and to deliver took time. So any relationships can take time to develop, but because this project was about love and connection, we needed the time to take these deeper steps. The fact that it took that long, it just showed the commitment of the people that were involved. Everybody really wanted to make a change. They wanted to put the best of themselves into the project to get the best outcome for the project. I, I think that was a really positive um, nature of the project, the fact that so much time was invested in it because it allowed us to build up our knowledge, it allowed us to build up our relationships, which obviously was the the heart of the project. We needed effective relationships with each other to be able to bring all this together. We wouldn't have been able to do that in a short amount of time. And there was difficult times in the project as well. And you know it allowed us to be able to to work through those. Um so yeah, I think that the length of time invested in the project was worthwhile and was was needed. <laughs> A common way of explaining service design is to work through a double diamond process. Um, what you can see here is that we had diamonds all over the place, um, which uh, the essential purpose of is that you start with what you think an issue is, you explore it, so you go out and learn more about it to understand if that actually is the issue that you are interested in or if there's other things to discover, and then you bring all that information and define together um, what your next steps are and what your priorities are. So the diamond that happened here was about care leavers and corporate parents bringing their experiences of love and relationships together. Very different, diverged massively, but together they were able to work to bring their perspectives together and identify what kind of challenges care leavers and corporate parents are experiencing and then go and discover what differences they could bring to the system. So in this discovery portion, they identified that by taking this research work, they would focus on being themselves at work, humanising the system, 
and nurturing the workforce. And once they defined that, they could then go out and explore what does that look like in practice? How might that actually happen before they drew that information together and defined what that might look like to Falkirk Council? A lot of that was about taking a step into the, the unknown. It was about discovery. It was about living um, with uncertainty. One of the ways that we manage uncertainty is to have this container around the work um, where people understand how they're working together and um, what they can expect from one another and how to support one another if that doesn't materialise. And so both groups created their own working together agreements and also did the same when they came together and that held them all the way through this process. A lot of things we got asked to do were really difficult but I think that's what made it so good because we did pull together, we did find ways to overcome everything that all the challenges that I brought up. You're doing this today, this is what we're doing, this is what we're going to achieve in the next couple of weeks and normally my face would be, I don't think so. We always did it, we always got there. We didn't have an end goal. The end goal was going to be what was going to work best. So the uncertainty of this project is an essential ingredient in the success of it. Um, because we didn't know what we were going to create. We just knew that it had to focus on love and relationships. And these communities got to define what that looked like. So essentially they would create that at the end. All the projects that I had been involved in, we, we thought we knew what the fix was. So the projects were going in to put a fix in place. And this project was the first one where I had been involved in where we didn't know the answer. And that was uncomfortable. That was really, really uncomfortable to start with. I don't think we had a clear sense at any point about a specific direction that we were going in. We were at each stage, we were having to, to find solutions, find ways round, influence, shape things in a different way. Several times on the journey, we had to stop, regroup, come back together as a group um, and work out how we were going to go forward. What we were able to do when working with uncertainty is to manage it. So it was a bungee cord that people were on. It was not a complete free fall. Um, and when things arose in each of the stages that were difficult to deal with or that were uncertain, we would regroup and figure that out together. It was be good because we took the time to really delve into what the issues and the problems were. And we worked really collaboratively on that. And I think that it means that when we're coming to design a solution, then we're designing something around what people have said and not what we've assumed to be the issues. What this project has achieved is nothing less than groundbreaking. It's been so unique and creative and innovative. I think what really matters to me now is making sure that with those really clear permissions that we're given to our workforce and the benefits we know that have been really, really clear for our young people, which is the real part of the, the, the promise that we're making to them, that we take this work forward. The project teams met the brief to produce service design ideas. So we have Hug in a Mug and share the care policy development ideas and Heart and Sleeve Network. I hope that Relationships First will continue to give young people a voice and let their voices be heard and make them feel confident to open up, that they'll be treated like normal people and make them also feel believed also been able to transfer that on to like colleagues so just being able to talk about it like not being shy of the subject being able to just talk about it quite openly like the good and the bad because that's the only way like that's going to work and when we started interviewing people around the council and explaining what they were trying to do in a lot of cases they hadn't heard of corporate parenting. They hadn't heard of um, how you look after children as if they're your own. So it's changed my boss. My boss had no idea what corporate parenting is. You get to a position in your job where you're just used to looking after what you do. It doesn't matter what job you have in the council. Remember that it's about someone's life. You should want to help them live their best lives. And that was the best. That was the best. Actually educating other people, educating road workers, educating street cleaners, educating somebody who works in the salt dome. So this isn't just a, a, a one-off project, this has to live and breathe, it has to move on beyond, it has to go into the future, um, 
and for and, and to do that, it will continue to need refreshed with people who want to become involved, people who want to be part of that promise we're making to care experience young people. Do you, do you think anything changed? So, yeah, 100%. So, um, out of all the people that we worked across, I think that changed their job role, their job perspective. I just recently moved house um, and actually had to go through the homeless system in Falkirk, which I had never experienced before. And as soon as I said I was care experienced on the phone, the woman was like, oh my goodness, do you know... Christine, who works in the council, and I was like, yeah, I was part of a project with her. Normally when you say you're care experienced, it's kind of an automatic shutdown barrier that you're not going to get a house because you're going to cause trouble. She then was like, just take your time, like understand, and just was a bit more personal with me. Um, so that really helped. Having watched our film, learned about what we did and how we did it. If you work in one of Falkirk Council or local partner services, we would love you to consider joining our Heart and Sleeve Network. If you work out with the Falkirk area, will you consider adopting a similar approach? <laughs>